This might not have been the trailer a lot of people were expecting, but a Salmon Run in Splatoon 3. This trailer actually has a lot of really interesting details, so I'm going to do a full analysis, and if you want to see more Splatoon 3 content from me, be sure to subscribe. But let's get started. So this may just be some wishful thinking for me, but every weapon shown here is the main weapon of their class. Splattershot, Charger on the far right that's hidden, Roller, and Blaster. This could just be another indication that Blasters are their own weapon class since they already have unique entrance animations. However, look at the top right. The special charge has definitely been updated, but this gets even weirder. You'd think these bars would be five or 10, but there's 23 of them. Now, if these bars represent 10 points for special each, the crab tank is 230p, but if it represents five, it's only 115. So what? Either A, this is just incomplete, B, specials are way more expensive now, which could be interesting, but even then, I don't think they go as far as to 230p, or C, I guess the bars could be something like 7 or 8, but it would be really weird to have that many of them, so I'm really curious what that actually means, and it's such an odd thing that stands out to me. It's a small thing, but this is a returning song. Considering pretty much none of the Splatoon 1 multiplayer songs got returned for Splatoon 2, this basically means we could see a lot more remix songs from previous Splatoon games. I'ma be real, this boss looks incredibly pathetically easy. Look how long they stay in the air before dropping down on you. Though keep in mind that mask means it's probably protecting them so you can't just shoot them out of the sky. The way you defeat it is cool though, it's literally a zone you paint over to make it fail. In a similar style, this opponent is definitely based on, well, tower control. You have to climb a, eh, I guess it's not a tower, but you know, close enough, and shoot the enemies on top. I wonder if we'll see one based on Rainmaker and Clam Blitz, or maybe a new Splatoon 3 mode altogether. So we see Egg Throw, a mechanic that's absolutely needed in Salmon Run in my opinion, and it's a great thing to add. However, there's a bit more to it than meets the eye. Two small details in a row here. One, throwing an egg clearly paints under your feet, and two, whiting frames have a clear X on it instead of just being white, so it's another little UI update. However, there's one more final and much more important detail about these Egg Throws. Not only do they consume your ink tank, but it actually depends on how much you charge it. This egg is thrown immediately and uses only a little bit of the ink tank, but you can see this egg throw takes much longer and drains more of the ink tank. Normal throws seem to consume about half the ink tank, leaving you with these white ink frames that I mentioned earlier after it was thrown. So this is my first negative point, but you know, I have to bring it up. It's there. There's only this way and B in the corner. Uh, come on, Nintendo. A little bit more, please. Back to the second trailer. Everyone pointed out how chargers have a glow and no laser. So with that in mind, uh, uh, there's a laser there. And this is on the same weapon that had a glow. So I have two theories. One, it's a salmon run thing. This would make sense as the laser would make it easier to keep track of your charger teammate, something you absolutely want to do in salmon. Or two, they scrapped the glow thing and are going back to a laser. They must have tested it, seen that maybe it didn't do what they wanted, and they're going back. One of these things I think is probably true. By the way, Splatoon JP tweeted some images. This is what Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 will look like in terms of a hub. Also, happy Leotos because Squiffer got confirmed. I know most of the main weapons are likely to come back, but hey, this is just your 100%. You don't have to worry, your main's in the game. So this trailer shows up Whale 5.1, and we now know exactly how it works, or at least way closer to final. So first of all, you can clearly use your main weapon while they're going off. They fire in pairs of two as I thought, and here they all seem to be targeting one person. Also, we don't know if you can move when using the main weapon, but I would assume you can. The charger just doesn't. In the original trailer, they clearly targeted multiple people. So how exactly does this work? Well, this image from Splatoon JP basically clears it up. You have a giant radius when you launch the weapon, and the whales can only target people inside this ring. Honestly, this clears up so many of my concerns about the special. It's easy to get out of the way because it's only that small radius. And while it tracks people, again, you have to be in that area in the first place. It's not like you can target four players all the way across different points in the map. Also, because it's just a straight line, you don't get a huge benefit from using the special far away. Meaning, unlike something like Stingray, it'll actually work perfectly fine on mid or short range weapons. I am still curious though, if the whales can be destroyed. Personally, I think they absolutely should be able to. It would be a nice downside that would add more counterplay to it, but we'll have to see. A viewer of mine named Zenshi pointed this out, but there's an old scroll that says, when smoke rises from the seven rings, the pink fish will emerge from the sea, devouring all creatures of the land. That could absolutely be referring to this. Pretty interesting, but lore is not really my thing. I don't know, Rasikos will probably have something on this eventually. Welcome to the most useless details, potentially. So A, this Inkling's clearly holding a different phone, which is interesting, but B, look at Summer 2022. It has 
tape over it. Is this to indicate that the release date was changed, as it most likely has, or is it something else? Because, I mean, look at this. It's even plastered over another piece on the left. That has to be there intentionally. So this detail goes by pretty fast, but the Snatchers have definitely been buffed, upgraded, or changed. It's their same design, but they seem to fly and be able to carry multiple eggs now, making them a significantly higher threat. Looking forward to that. Anyway, so forget every other detail I've ever told you about this trailer. This is the most extreme thing they've ever shown off, and they don't even talk about it. You can squid roll twice? What the f***? Like, look at this! And it doesn't even use your ink tank! Outside of the confirmation it doesn't use ink, a small detail here is that you actually have a little bit of a glow when you do the squid roll. The undercover actually glows when they do a squid roll. It isn't a thing in the first trailer, and it's definitely dimmer in this one, but I mean... It's there. There's a glow. Also, also, you very clearly have some end lag they're cutting out because they're just stuck in the sky in squid form here. So there is a bit of a vulnerability there like I expected. So, uh, squid roll is way more extreme than we thought. Just the ability to do it twice, especially knowing you can shoot during these, is crazy. Maybe if you shoot, you can't do this double variant? I don't know. But, I mean, I'm just imagining Tetra doing this and then rolling four times. This is nightmare fuel. Oh, and just wait, it gets 50 times more scary. Listen. So, uh, that, that's Armor's sound effect. So, honestly, this got a lot of people thinking about the concept of a parry and the squid roll being a parry. Not necessarily negating all damage, but what if it negated some of it? Which is such a cool concept that we actually did a full discussion on it, and it'll be live tomorrow, so... You might want to check that out. However, while it's possible, it seems like this might just be Nintendo really messing up their sound effects. A viewer of mine named Umbers has pointed out that you can actually take a look at the pixels of ink damage at the bottom. It starts at 99, and after rolling through the ray, there is some damage effects, and it's 114. Honestly, being able to double squid roll and squid roll and surge and shoot after it is already pretty drastic, so I don't really see them adding a parry to it but I still think there's a technical possibility it could reduce damage. I just don't see it very likely. So yeah, despite the odd sound effect, really the only takeaway from this is that you can double squid roll and it glows a bit more, which is still pretty damn interesting, honestly. The fact that we haven't seen a double squid roll until now means maybe there's more to these movement options that we have yet to uncover, and I can't wait to see what else they can do. So yeah, while this is technically just a Salmon Run trailer, it featured a ton of multiplayer and smaller detail ones. I hope you guys have enjoyed, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned for more discussions. I'm sure things are going to pick up as we get closer to Splatoon 3's release date, so stay tuned, I'll see you all in another video.